Okay, so for this video, we're going to continue work on our inheritance uh, vehicles, cars, trucks project. Okay, and we're going to start with a part five code, uh, which was we're up to, and we're adding the part six qu question requirements. So we're going to add file writing, the ability to write the data out to file, file reading, the ability to read the data back in again. We'll add a search command as well and search button so we can do some searching. And we'll also, just for fun, because some students have had a problems still visualizing arrays and array lists. We'll look at converting the array lists that we've got existing already, or the array lists, or maybe one of them, maybe all of them. We'll have it, we'll see how we go. And we'll convert those to an array, just to, just to show you how easy it is to do. Okay, so it's not hard at all. Converting between array lists and arrays and linked lists, uh, the, or any other data structure is really quite uh, easy. Okay, so you've got trees and queues and stacks and all sorts of things. Converting between is pretty easy. Once you've done it a few times, it's really easy. Okay, the first time's hard. Just to quickly review the question so far. So, uh, this is a multi-part question. And in question part one, we just built the classes and a little tester class. We built the hierarchy of the three classes. We had vehicle, car, and truck, and built a tester class. In part two, that was all part one work we did. Part two, uh, we added arrays and array lists. So you got an array list of vehicles, and those, that, that array list can contain cars and trucks as well. And we created a tester class to test all the functionality out. Uh, in part three, we added a, a GUI or a graphical user interface. So the user could click the add button and add vehicles to the array list or add, add a car to the array list or add a truck to the array list. So they could choose which type of vehicle to add by selecting radio buttons. Uh, and that was what we did in part three. Uh, part four is um, more advanced GUI stuff that we did. And uh, we added aggreg aggregation as well. So we added a manufacturer class in. So each vehicle could be manufactured by a particular manufacturer. Part, uh, part five uh, was where we just did a short week this week because students had an assignment due. So we just added, looked at adding some testing code. We added a two string header method to each of the data classes. And we just had a quick review of input dialogues. So it was just a short week to give students plenty of time to work on their assignments. And part six, or question six, is where we added the file I.O., the searching, and we also had a look at tab panes, uh, and that's about all we got to. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing for this video, is we're going to be reproducing this functionality. We're adding file I.O.s and searching, and uh, we'll also look at converting, like I said, the uh, one or more array lists to an array, just to show you how easy, easy it is. Okay, so uh, we'll do that. So here's my, my code. I'm, I'm working in my Camtasia folder and I've just copied all of the part five code. So this is all the part five code exactly as it is uh, in the GitHub there. And um, and I'm gonna, and I've added the extra, some extra examples here that we'll review in a second um, for file reading and file writing. So this, is, apart from those two files there, everything else is just part of the GitHub. Um, okay, so we're gonna work on these. Let's just start with this file writing sample here. Okay, so there's many ways to write a file in Java. Many ways. This is one way. Okay, so I'm going to show you one way, and you'll see there's a bunch of question marks here, and we'll fill those in. Okay, so uh, basically what it comes down to, if you've got all your data in a, if you want to, if you want to use a formatter for outputting a file, that's that's a great way to go. They're nice and easy to use. So formatter out file equals new formatter, and then you supply a file name, which is just a string, and our string is set to file.txt. Okay. And then we live through our array list, and here I'm, I'm writing to the out file, and you do that with outfile.format. Okay, so it's a bit like a string.format, outfile.format, and we're going to pass in a bit of string data, followed by a new line. Okay, so each, each field or each bit of data is going to be written one, one item per line, and we're going to get something out of the array list. String, string array list get, so we're going to get that current row out of the array list or current data. Um, data out of the array list, we need to get something to do with that data, get name, get phone, all that sort of stuff, okay, so we might, if we were looping through employees, we'd see, we'd, we'd string list, string array list dot get k would get us an employee, and then we'd say get name, get phone, get address, get whatever, okay, so we, we're getting all the data out of the array list, and writing it to a file, here I'm writing it one field per line, so the slash n's there on every field, so if I looked at the file later, and this was get name, I'd see the name on the first line. If this is get address, I'd see the address on the next line. This is get phone number, I'd see their phone number on the next line if they had one and so on. 
and that would be repeated for each employee. So each employee would have one bit of data per line. There's many ways you can write files. You can do them comma separated if you want, so all the data's on one line, separated by commas. You can do them tab separated. It's many different ways you can do it. I'm doing it one, one field per line because it's a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about so many things. For example, what if you're writing data out to a, to a file as a comma separated file and there was commas in the data? For example, an address might have flat one comma 55 Finch Street or something like that. Okay, so if there's commas in the data and you read it back in comma separated, you might be splitting up the address into multiple fields and it, you could easily lose track. So just keep it simple for now. We're going to use it uh, one field per line. Okay. So you do an out file here, equals new formatter, that opens the file for writing. Then we're writing to the file inside the loop here, out file dot format, writes to the file, writes to the file. So each one of those is a write statement. And then right at the end of that, we go out file dot close. Okay, and we've got a try catch. So everything that could throw in exceptions inside the try block. So we've got a try up here followed by, that's the end of the try. Okay, so that's all the try block between those curly brackets and at the end of the at the end of the, the block of code there we're going to we're just displaying to the screen the number of lines written to the file so array list dot size or string array list get dot size that should be uh, plus lines written to and then the file name that they've written to which was our file dot text okay so uh, we're just telling telling the user um, in the console screen, not in the GUI, just in the console screen, we're just writing out, system out print line, the number of lines written to a file, which is not a bad thing to do for, for verification and checking as you go anyway. Okay, if there are any exceptions, there's several types of exceptions you need to handle, and there's a file not found exception, and you could just say system out print line, file not found, followed by the file name, the file wasn't there, I can't write to it, it wasn't there, um, although this does create the file automatically if it doesn't exist, but if it can't be created, let's say you're running on a on a device that's read only or has errors or issues um, then this command here would fail and we get file not found coming out on the screen exit one exit minus one means an error occurred so that whatever invoked your program can check the error result and um, take action if it was a negative number or a positive number or whatever okay so that's what the system exit is and the minus one just means if the caller wants to look at how we exited we can pass back a field of a value of minus one and they could check that and see if they want to continue processing or try again or alert somebody or something so we're just alerting them that, that an error occurred a negative number usually indicates an error and then if there's no such element or a formatter closed exception so i'm handling both of those in the in the same catch so i've got a single vertical bar there so i'm handling both of those and then there was some sort of error writing to the file and i'm just displaying an error to say that and again a system exit with a minus one indicates an error occurred to whatever invoked our program. Okay, so that's basically what it is for writing a file. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take our code and we'll go into our GUI. So there's our GUI. We're changing it now to question six. Okay, because uh, we're answering part six and we're adding the file IO. And searching and whatever else we get to converting arrays to array lists and so on, or vice versa. So let's grab that code there. We'll just grab all that. Apart from the import statements, so we'll grab all the, the bulk of the code there. So I'm just copying and pasting all that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste it into a new method, right down the end of the vehicle GUI. Okay, so right down here. And I'm gonna call that private void file write. open our curly brackets and I'm going to indent all of this code here so it's nicely indented inside our project and that's looking much better okay so file write I'm hard coding the file as file.txt you could you could pass it through as a string if you wanted to to make it so I could write any sort of file or any name of file I'm just going to call it file.txt that's good enough for me <clears throat> now our array list is called vehicles if I scroll up to the top here you'll see it it's the very top of the so you'll see there's an array list of vehicle Called vehicles. So vehicles is our array list of vehicles and we're going to write that out to file. So I'm going to grab that vehicles control C, scroll back down to our file writer and it's going to be vehicles.size, vehicles.get, vehicles.get, vehicles.get. Okay and 
vehicles dot size there as well. So I'm just changing all that string array list or array list to uh, our vehicles array list. Okay, so I've got those there. Let's have a look at our vehicle class to see what data we need to save. So I'm now going to look at our vehicle class. And you'll see there's a model, a build date, and a fuel economy. So just three types of data. We won't worry about the manufacturer just for the second. We won't worry about, won't worry about manufacturer. Okay. But you'll see here uh, that there's a, a get model method, a get build date, and a get fuel economy. So the methods we're going to be using here to write out to file. Let's use get model for now. And we'll go over here and we'll paste there get model. Go back to vehicles, get build date. So we're just getting the data out of the array list. So each each row in the array list or each item in the array list is a vehicle, and we're getting the model for that vehicle, getting the build date for that vehicle. And the last bit of data is the fuel economy. Okay. So we'll get that. So we'll write those out to file there. They're all going to be formatted as strings, which is okay. And it's one field per line, like I said. Okay. We don't need anything else after the etc and that should be enough that should be all we need now what we need to do is just write the file somewhere and what i propose now is we'll add a write button just for now just for fun okay so go back up to the very top of our class here and where we've got our buttons declared and we'll add another button i'll call i'll call it file write button and it's save file I could call it save file button if I wanted to, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. File right button. And go back down to our vehicle GUI. This is where we construct our GUI. So we're going to add the button now to our... That's where the other buttons are added. Where are they? Um, on the buttons panel. Buttons panel. There, that's where the buttons are added. So I'll add, the, I'll add the file right after the display button and before the exit. So buttons panel dot add file right button. Okay, so we've got just we'll have add button, display button, right button, test data button still on the left. And let's activate that button now. So reacts to mouse clicks. And we'll do that down here. So we're just gonna copy that code. Okay. And we're not calling test data, we're calling file right. Okay, so whenever the file right button is clicked, this method file right will be kicked off automatically. Okay, we should be good to compile now. So control one to compile, one error. Ah, so we need to do our imports too. So we've, we've imported all those things and we need to do the import. So let's have a look at our, our little code here. And you'll see that these are the things we need to import. Okay, so let's go back over here. Uh, if we open up Java help, I can show you how to find these things. Oops, sorry. So there's a Java help. Let's just paste those imports into our main program here. And I'll show you how to find out what they need to be. So formatter. There's our formatter. I'm just using the Java help. And you'll see it's Java Util formatter. <coughs> Sorry. So that Java Util star takes care of that. So we can delete that. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a flu coming on. Uh, file not found exception you'll see that's part of the java io.star class or java io.file file not found exception so we just need that little part there import java io.star star and that takes care of all three though so we can just do a star if we want to okay so the only new import we needed was that one java io.star should be able to compile now compile control one Control 2, everything's compiled, okay, let's go Control 2 to comp to run. And now let's click our test data button. Oops, we've got an error here. Two string, vehicle GUI 102. So this is pure gold. Whenever you see an exception, stop and look at it. And the first, what you need to do is look at anything that resembles your code. So for example, if the, if, the, if these are the first lines here, um, java x.swing.abstract button, that's not part of our code. So you keep going down through here until you find something that looks like your code. We're lucky in this case, the very first item there is to do with our code. Vehicle 2 string, vehicle Java 102. So vehicle Java 102. And that's coming up with a null pointer exception. So it's something around line 102 in our vehicle class. 
is causing a problem. So let's have a look at our vehicle class. And around line 102. And you'll see that to do with getting the manufacturer. Okay, so all I've done so far is click the test data button. <coughs> so somewhere in there we're not setting up the setting up the manufacturer properly. So let's have a look at our GUI again and go down to our test data button or test data code. Test data button. Let's do a search on that. Test data button, test data button. And it runs the test data method. Let's do a search on that. And here it is. And you'll see here, this 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 test data button is really only good for when we had the the original program. We didn't have the, the manufacturers being added in. So what we need to do is for each vehicle we add to the array list, we also need to set the manufacturer. So what I might do is comment out this code here and go back to the longer hand version of doing it. Okay, and we'll original reinstate this original code here. Because I want to get to these these vehicles so I can add a manufacturer for each one. So if you have a look at our vehicle class, vehicle class. Yeah. Let's have a look at our constructor. You'll see there's one that does take a manufacturer, which is okay. Or there's another one maybe that takes a set manufacturer. So it's another one that's got set manufacturer. So what we can do when we create a vehicle, we can either create the vehicle here, add the vehicle here, if we knew what the manufacturer was, or else we can just create vehicles and go V1, V2, V3, then we can go V1.setManufacturer, V2.setManufacturer, V3.setManufacturer. Now I don't have any manufacturers yet, these are all just dummy data, so I'm going to create a manufacturer, M equals new manufacturer. Okay, so it gets us over that hurdle. And then what we want to do is just set that, I'm just, it's just a dummy manufacturer, it's going to have no data in it. We're just trying to get past that null pointer exception. So I'll set the manufacturer for each vehicle. Set them all to M. <laughs> V1, V2, V3. V3, don't need that last one. Just make sure I'm calling the right method. It's set manufacturer, passing in a manufacturer. So that's doing that. Okay, so we've created a dummy manufacturer. Set the manufacturer for each vehicle, V1, V2, V3. Now they should be good to add to the array list and good to display. We should be able to get all the data out of there without having null pointer exceptions. Let's save all those and do a compile of our GUI class. Control 1, Control 2 to run again. Click the test data button and we'll click save to file. Okay. And you'll see the little message displayed there. Three lines written to file.txt. So all good so far. Let's close that. And close that little window, and we'll have a look at our file.txt. Okay, there it is there, file.txt. Drag it into TextPad, and you'll see we've got a vehicle name, followed by a build date, followed by a, f a fuel capacity or fuel economy or whatever it was. Then the next vehicle name, the next vehicle's build date and its fuel economy. Followed by the next vehicle's name or build uh, model, the build date and its fuel economy. Okay, so you'll see each vehicle is one, one bit of data per line, because that's how we wrote it out. I'll close that now. Here's our GUI. So we've got uh, one bit of data per line, because that's how we wrote it out. So I'm in the vehicle's GUI now, <coughs> in our file write method. Okay, and uh, so we've got the data one per line, and that's, that's proven there in the, in the file. Okay, so what should we do? Let's let's just change that slightly, and uh, we'll change it so our vehicle GUI, our test data button, doesn't just set it to uh, a blank. Let's let's make it so it's holding or something like that. So let's have a look at our manufacturer class, manufacturer, and you'll see there's a constructor that takes a name, an address, and the number of items they can build or number of cars they can build per whatever per year or whatever it is per day, whatever whatever the capacity is. So we need to pass in a string, a string, and a build capacity, which is a double. Okay, when we create a manufacturer. So let's do that. Let's just improve things slightly. Back to the GUI class. When we create a manufacturer, we'll call it Holden. So the name, the address. Okay, so two strings followed by the number of vehicles they can build in a day. And I'll just say 100 there, just for a random, a random number. Okay, so 
followed by semicolon. So that would be Holden. And if I want to set vehicle 1's manufacturer to Holden and vehicle 2's manufacturer to Holden, let's also create a Ford or a Mazda. <clears throat> I'll call it Ford. And they're Ford. And they're 55 or 44. Uh, all, all street, and they can build 120 per day, just for fun, just uh, made up numbers. And we'll set the vehicle manufacturer for the third vehicle to Ford. I don't know why, the way this is set up, V2's a Ford, <laughs> and they're making Holden, and Holden's making them. It's just made up data, I don't get in a worry about what I'm doing here. <laughs> okay, so th this little test set of buttons, just to give data into our, our methods, to save us having to enter data all the time when we're testing, so just adding some random data okay if that worries you if, Hol if, if Holden making Ford's worrying you I'll make the manufacturer for the second one Ford as well okay so let's run that control one control two and we'll add our test data and you'll see everything's displaying nicely here so it's Holden Ford Ford and we'll save to file so that's all written to file go back over to our file and reload it and you'll see we still got the same data. We're not running any ma any manufacturers out yet. Okay, so let's add in the manufacturer. We need to add in the manufacturer there for our file writing. So back to our GUI. Scroll down here, <clears throat> and we're gonna. Sh I'm gonna show you many ways you can do this. Okay, uh, we'll do it the wrong way to start with, and I'll, and I'll explain why it's the wrong way shortly. Okay, so. We want to get the manufacturer out of the M equals. We want to get the manufacturer for that vehicle. So vehicle doc, vehicles dot get K gets us a vehicle. Let's go to our vehicle class. And there's a set manufacturer method. Is there a get manufacturer? No. So we didn't add that last week. So we've got get model, get build date, get fuel economy, but we need to add a get manufacturer in. So we'll copy that method there. Control C. Up above there to where our accessors are, we'll get a methods and we'll change it to get manufacturer. It's returning a manufacturer, no parameters passed or no values passed, and it's just re going to re say return manufacturer. So, whatever the manufacturer is for the current vehicle, it's going to get returned by this method get manufacturer. Okay, and this is all in the vehicle class. Okay, you with me so far? So we've added, a new, we've added a new method into our get manufacturer as well, and into our into our vehicle class called get manufacturer. Let's go back to our GUI, and so to get the manufacturers, that gets the manuf dot get manufacturer will get the manufacturer. <clears throat> so vehicles dot get K gets a manufacturer, and get manufacturer gets the manufacturer for that vehicle. Okay, so now what we can do is have a look at our manufacturer class, and then we can say get name, or whatever the excess of name methods are, get name, get address, get build capacity. Okay, so we'll get the manufacturer, then we're going to call get name, and then get address, and get build capacity, and write all those details out to a file as well. Okay, so we're now talking about our manufacturer, so it's m dot get name, let's start with get name, I'm getting the manufacturer methods, if you keep an eye up the top of you can see what class I'm dealing with. Get manufacturer. So from our manufacturer class, we're going to get the manufacturer. Manufacturer's name. And then we want to get their address. So back to the manufacturer's class. Get address. Back to the GUI. And that's M dot get address. Okay. And the last bit of data we can get for the manufacturer is their build capacity. And we get that with get build capacity. Build capacity. Okay, so for each vehicle in the array list, we get their model, their date, and their fuel economy, and write each of those fields one per line to the data, to the output file. And in here, we're getting the manufacturer for each vehicle, and we're writing the name, the address, and the build capacity for each manufacturer. Okay, so we're writing all of the data out to the file, not just the vehicle's data, but the manufacturer data as well. So let's, comp let's now compile and run our GUI class again, or GUI program. 
and we'll click our test data button and save to file that's all we need to do and go back to our file and then we'll reload that and you'll see here we've got Porsche the build date the fuel economy then the manufacturer for that vehicle Holden their address and their build capacity number of vehicles they can build per day then we've got the Ford car the the, uh, the build date and the fuel capacity followed by the Ford manufacturer and they're at 44 All Street and they can build 120 vehicles a day and then we've got the Mini and so on, the, the build date and the fuel economy, followed by the manufacturer. So one thing you might notice here is the issue that I was alluding to earlier. <clears throat> we've, got, we've got each vehicle being written out to file and the manufacturer. <coughs> now let's say we've got 1,000 vehicles, but only three manufacturers. The way the program's set up at the moment is we're going to have a thousand vehicles and the manufacturer is written out a thousand times as well. If each manufacturer is used pretty evenly, it might be 333 times per file for, per manufacturer, but every vehicle is going to have their manufacturer. So all that data is going to be written out many times. If there's only three manufacturers and a thousand types of vehicles, well, each of those manufacturers is going to be written out to that file many times. So that's a lot of duplication there that we can avoid. If we're talking about millions of vehicles or, or more, we could have each manufacturer written out thousands or more times. So we're going to try and reduce that duplication. And here's an example of it. Ford 44 All Street 120, and here's that same data written out again. Okay, so maybe we can stop that. Let's have a look and see what we can do. And the trick is here. Instead of writing out the manufacturer, what we want to do is write out, or we want to find whatever manufacturer was getting used for that vehicle and look up their index, their index value in the array list. Because all of these manufacturers, this is a vehicle class, vehicle GUI class, and all of those manufacturers that we use are stored in the, a manufacturer's array list. Okay, so it's stored in manufacturers. So maybe instead of writing all that data out to file for each vehicle, we can instead just write out the index of that manufacturer in this array list. Just write out that index, which would be an integer, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay, so instead of writing three lines of, file, of data, for each manufacturer or five or ten whatever it becomes we're just writing a single integer okay so it's going to save the all save all that duplication in our file so let's have a look and see how that works so we're going to look up our, manu our manufacturers and find a match and then write out the index of that manufacturer so i'll comment out this code for now because we don't need that so we're now in our, we're still in our file write method we're still in there okay and what we want to do is search for our manufacturer's array list. So for int uh, p is equal to zero, p is less than manufacturers.size. So we're looping through our array list p plus plus. And we do an if statement if. manufacturers dot get p so we're getting that manufacturer out of the array list and if they are equal to the manufacturer up here this m then we found a match okay and what we can do is we can write that data straight out to file Shush, shush doggies, shush, making a video. <laughs> okay, so for, oh that's a sh quite nice dog. Okay, so for each manufacturer, instead of writing out their name and their address and their capacity for, for every vehicle in the in their list, we're just writing out a single integer, which is their index in the manufacturer's array. Okay, and but what if, what if no manufacturer was found? Okay, what if a match wasn't found? Uh, well, we need to do a little bit more processing to take care of that. Uh, maybe one way we can do that is, is do this. So we'll, we'll create an index and uh, set it to menu, menu index and set it equal to minus one. And down here where we find a match, we'll set menu index equal to, equals, to, equals to P, the index of the array list, sorry, P. And then what we'll do is we'll 
write out that data down here. Instead of writing up here, we're going to write out menu index. Okay. So this little bit of clever code here <coughs> means that if if the vehicle isn't found in the array list, which um, the manufacturer isn't found in the array list of manufacturers, which would be extremely unlikely. I mean, <laughs> assuming that manufacturer's array list is created from the manufacturers, I, I don't see how you could possibly find a vehicle without. Oh, sorry, got some barky dogs. So it would be extremely unlikely for, to not find a, a, a manufacturer for a vehicle. Uh, the only way that could really happen is if, let's say, a manufacturer is set up and a vehicle was using, say, Mazda as a manufacturer and you deleted Mazda from the manufacturer's list but you hadn't updated the vehicle to say that Mazda had been deleted. That would be the only sort of way you could get a, a mismatch here. But in that case, if you do delete a manufacturer, there should be a semicolon there, if you do delete a manufacturer and you couldn't find them in your array list of manufacturers, the negative one would be written to file. And that's, we're going to use that negative one in, when we read the data back in to, uh, to tell us that there's no manufacturer for that vehicle. Okay, so let's just go over things quickly again. So this is our file right. We're storing the file name in a, a string, creating a formatter object, formatter out file equals new formatter file name. We're looping through all the vehicles in our array list of vehicles. And for each one, we're getting the model, the build date, and the fuel economy, and we're writing each of those fields out to file one per line. So slash n means new line. Then we're getting the manufacturer for the vehicle. So vehicles K gives us the, manufacture, the vehicle in that array list at that location. And then we're getting the manufacturer for that vehicle, storing that in M. And then we're looping through all manufacturers in the manufacturer's array list now. We're jumping across the manufacturers. And if we find a match, if the manufacturer's dot get the one at that location is equal to the one in the vehicles class, the same memory address. We're comparing memory addresses here. If they're the same memory address, they've got to be the same manufacturer. And so then we can say menu index is equal to P. And then we write out the value of menu index to the output file as well. So now what we should see in the output file is a build model, a model, a date, a fuel economy, and then an integer to represent the vehicle in the manufacturer's array list, the index of the array list. Let's save everything. Control one. Control 2 and we'll do test data followed by save and then we'll go over to our file <clears throat> and we'll reload that and there it is. Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 which wasn't what I was expecting so let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at our code. Menu index equals P. Okay so what I might do is put a little to track down what's happening, I might put a little system dot out dot print line method in here, and I'll say p equals plus p. So that gets written to the screen, so we can begin tracking down what's going on here, why it's not being set up correctly. Okay, so let's just control one, control two, test data, save to file. Okay, so we're getting those coming out P012, P012, that's all coming out right, 012. Okay, so <clears throat> if you remember, what's happening is it's not finding a match. And if you remember up here, we actually hard coded the manufacturers back in our constructor. There, there we are. So we created the manufacturers and added them to the array list. Okay. So we should be using the manufacturers that have already been created to find a match, otherwise we're not going to find a match. The ones we created down here when I did the test starter button, because uh, it's been a, a, a few weeks or so, um, I forgot about those and I created new ones. So we shouldn't be doing that. Um, we should be using the ones that are in our li array list already. Manufacturers. Get zero. Zero is Holden. And get one was Ford. That's much better. Okay, so we're using the ones that we've already got in our array list of vehicles. Okay, so rather than create new ones, which we can't find a, find a match on. Okay, so we, because we're looping through this, this array list up here that we created above. You see, that's the one we're looping through when we're saving the manufacturer for a vehicle, but we weren't linking this array list here to the vehicle below. So that's what was going wrong while we were finding a match. Okay, so let's just review our code quickly. Back down here in our test starter button. We're now using our manufacturer's array list to set each manufacturer. Get one means forward, get zero means holden. 
get to means something else. Okay, down here, uh, we're, we're looping through the vehicles, the manufacturer's okay, that should be fine. And this code should now work. We should now find a match to our array list manufacturers to what's allocated for each vehicle. Let's save that. Control 1, Control 2. Uh, test data, save the file, three lines written. Let's get back across to our file over here. And you'll see that now we've got zero, which is Holden, and one for Ford and one for Ford. So that's working great now. So instead of, instead of, <laughs> instead of duplicating all the data for each vehicle, we're now just uh, writing out the index of the, of the manufacturer uh, for each vehicle. So we're not duplicating all the manufacturer uh, data for each vehicle as we're writing out the file. So much better, much shorter. Um, and let's see how that goes. So the next thing I want to probably do is add the file read. So file read, we'll go back, go back across to our folder here and we've got the file read code here. Okay, so many ways you can read a file in Java, just like with writing a file, there's many ways you can read a file. And one way is to use the scanner object, scanner class. And what you do is you say scanner whatever equals new scanner and you use a file reader inside there, new file reader. When we're reading user input from the command line, we'd say scanner whatever equals new scanner in round brackets system.in. That meant the keyboard, the default system input device. But now we're telling it to read or use something else as an input device and we're saying a file here. So we're saying new file reader and then the file name, file.txt. Okay. And once you've used scanner, everything's the same as we've done for user input. Next line, next int, next, next double, all those sorts of great commands we've been using for console input already. And there's also this little ripper here, which is in file has next. In other words, while there's more data in the file, read the field one as next line, field two as next line, field three is next int, and so on, until we can create enough to create a vehicle. Okay. And that should be all we need. There's a few exceptions to catch. So all of this is in a try catch as always. There's a try block. Any of these commands here can cause an exception. And there's a few exceptions here we can handle. File not found exception, no such element exception. They're the two main ones we need to worry about. So let's add that into our project. Back across the vehicle GUI. We'll scroll right down to the end just before the main method. We'll add another me method called private void read file okay back across to our read sample code i want to grab all of that and go to our vehicle gui and paste it in and just tab all that in tab it all in again that's pretty good and then what we need to do is worry about these imports at the top. So let's take those at the top here. And do you remember what the import is for scanner? So it's Java Util Scanner. So that already takes care of the scanner. We can delete that. Let's go back to our Java help and we'll find where that one lives. File Reader. And you'll see it's Java IO File Reader. So this import there automatically takes care of that as well. So we can just delete that there. Just use asterisk. That's fine. So we haven't had to increase our imports by much, just the I.O. one that we did earlier. Back down to the end where the file read is, or read file, and we can delete those few comp like line of dots. Just to make it a bit like our other code, we'll, we'll add that, uh, we'll do the same sort of thing here with file reader, just the setting up a string. So string file name equals that, and we'll read the file name here. Instead of reading file.txt, we'll, we'll read the file name, which is a string, which is set to file.txt. Um, we'll grab one of those from the, from the file right. We'll grab the, one of those catch handlers and we'll say error reading from file, file name. And I don't think we need to do anything different for this one. So we might combine those like we did with the other example. Single vertical bar, that. So if it's anything to do with uh, reading from the file, if it's file not found exception or no such element exception, we're going to run this code here, which is going to display an error to the console screen and exit with a minus one return value, which indicates an error. Okay, let's pause that. 
that on there. Error, error, wherever it happens. Um, okay, so what you might remember is that each vehicle, um, the, the first field that comes in is the make, make and model. So I'll say make model equals in file.next line. Okay, so we wrote them out in that order. That's the make model. Then we've got the build date. So build date equals in file.next line. And the next field is our uh, fuel economy. Okay, and that's a double coming in. So we'll say double fuel econ is equal to in file.next double. Okay, and the next field, next, next piece of data coming in is our index of our manufacturer in our manufacturer's array list. So let's have a look at that. Int menu index is equal to in file.next int. And that's all the data we're reading in. And we can use those first three fields. So a vehicle class constructor takes a model, a build date, and a fuel economy. So we can pass those three fields across. A model, a build date, and a fuel economy. Oops. Okay, so that's passing across the string, the string, and a double to our vehicle class constructor. String, string, double. Okay. And the last thing to worry about is our manufacturer. So what do we do if manufacturer is minus one? Hmm. If manufacturer is minus one, that means we've got a manufacturer for a vehicle that doesn't exist anymore. So that would be a pretty serious issue. And for now, just for this program, I'm going to handle that issue by throwing an exception. If menu index is less than zero, I'm going to throw an exception. Throw new and I'm going to throw one of these exceptions here. No such element exception. No such manufacturer. That's, that's a pretty good one. No such element. Uh, and that, that, that means um, the manufacturer not found. Or does not exist. Minus one means that they don't exist anymore. Okay, so if we're here, we should have a manufacturer that exists. So let's get it out of the array list. Manufacturer M. Our array list is called manufacturers. And dot get menu index. Okay, so menu index is the index of the manufacturer in the array list. So we're getting a, we're creating a local manufacturer M equals manufacturers dot get menu index. So if it's zero. They'll get the, the first one out of the array list, which is Holden. If it's one, they'll get the second one out of the array list, which is Ford, and so on. So this will now be either Ford, Ford, Holden, whatever. And what we want to do is set that manufacturer for that vehicle. V.set manufacturer. So that one we've just set up. Okay, so set manufacturer to M. V.set manufacturer to M. Now the vehicle's complete. It's got its make, model, and build date. And, and fuel economy, and it's also got the manufacturer set up to them for them as well. And then we can just add that vehicle now to the array list, and it's a complete vehicle. So that should be it. Our read file should now be working fine. What we want to do now is add a read button. Okay, so let's go back and add a read, a read button so we can read from file. File read button. And we'll call that fo uh, load file. That'll be the label for it, load file. So we've got a new button called file read. We'll come down here and we'll add it to our buttons panel. So I probably want that to go before the write. So I want it to be read then write. So buttons panel dot add. So we're going to test start a button, add button, display button, file read button, file write button, followed by the exit button right over on the right hand side. So file read button, we want to activate that. And it's the same sort of code as this. I'll just copy that. Everything's a lot of copying and pasting. 
and set a file right at file read. And that should be it. We've wired up our button, we've written the code, and uh, everything should be good. So let's control one. Oops, three errors. File read. What did I call it? Oh, read file. What do I call this one? I call this one file write, so I'm going to call this one down below file read. Just to be just to be consistent. File read. Two errors. Manufacturer cannot find symbol manufacturer. Manufacturer, and you'll see I've spelled it wrong. Manufacturer. Euro. Very easy to do. Manufacturer. Save the file. Control one. One more error. Array list. So what's our array list called? It's vehicles. That's what we're adding the vehicles to. Vehicles dot add v. Okay. The other thing you probably want to do as well up here is because we're reading all this data in back into our array list, you probably want to make sure it's empty before you start loading data into it. Otherwise you could be loading the same data in multiple times. So up here you want to say vehicles.clear. So whatever's in the array list, clear it all out and then we can start loading more data in. So we're opening a file using the scanner class and file reader and they work really well together. Good way to read in the file. And then it's our scanner object, which is in file, in file dot next line, in file dot next line, in, in file dot next double for our fuel economy, and that can that that allows us to create a vehicle, vehicle vehicles new vehicle, model we just read in, the build date we just read in, and the fuel economy we just read in. So we're calling the vehicle class constructor, and then we're setting the manufacturer for that vehicle to the manufacturer based on their index. Okay, so we're reading the integer from file, which is a manufacturer index in the array list. If that's less than zero, I'm throwing an exception, which will kick off this catch code down here and our program will exit. That's pretty extreme, but it's just for this example, okay? If this is a real project, we'd probably want to do something more than that. We'd probably want to at least display a GUI error as well, saying um, there's something wrong with the data, contact the IT team. We'd probably want to write out data to a file to indicate what the error is, much more than just reading error reading file. We want to write out some sort of error log. There's a whole lot we can do if this is a real application, but we just... We're just messing around here, so there's nothing really to worry about. Okay, so uh, if the manu if the manufacturer's index is less than zero, it's an error, throw an exception. Otherwise, create a manufacturer from that item in the array list. Manufacturers.get the index, and then we'll set the manufacturer for that vehicle to that vehicle, which is to the manufacturer we've just created, M. And then we'll add that vehicle. It's now complete. It's got the all the data to do with the vehicle plus the manufacturer. So we can add that vehicle to our array list of vehicles. Okay, so let's save our code and run it. Control 1, Control 2. Let's add test data and save to file. And let's check our file. And everything's looking pretty good. Let's go back to our GUI and go load file. Ooh. And our program crashed. Error reading from file, file.txt. So something's wrong with our reading here. Now, you could put you could put system out print line statements in here, okay, to see what's going on. And that would be a good way to track down the error. And you'll find that this is fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Everything down here is fine. But the next time through, the, the program crashes when it gets to here. So cast your mind back to when you first used Scanner, and you might remember me saying uh, that when you move from strings to numbers, so from strings to doubles or integers or whatever, and back to strings again, you've got to clear the input buffer, okay? Because uh, the carriage return line feed characters are still in there and polluting the buffer. So all you need to do to fix the issue that's going on is just go in file dot next line. So we're finished reading in all, all our data. The next bit of data is going to be a string. So you want to clear the buffer before we go back to read that data. So just put a comment there, clear buffer. And we're not doing anything with the input. We're just reading it in and throwing it away. <coughs> <coughs> so um, we're just clearing the buffer. And next time we read the, go through this up here and get the next line of input, our buffer's nice and clean. So 
Uh, that's what that's what was going on there. We could we could add a whole bunch of print line statements in there and track down what the errors is happening. But that's what it is with with scanner. You got to remember to clear the buffer when you go from numbers back to strings again. Easy to do, so easy to do. Okay, let's run it again. Control one, control two. Do a test data. Click the save to file. Click the load from file. Click the display button. Everything seems to be working. We can't tell whether it actually read the file or not yet. We might add a clear button in just to make sure it does clear it. But let's have a look at our file. And you'll see everything's nice, nice and neat. If we click test data again, so we've got now six, six vehicles, 12, 19, 18, and so on. So we've got a whole bunch of vehicles here now created. We click save to file. We'll exit our program. And we'll reload the file because it's being displayed. So there's all our vehicles there. Let's rerun the program again. Control 1, Control 2, and we'll go load from file and display. And there's all our vehicles. Everything's all intact. Holding forward, forward, holding forward, forward. Everything's intact. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Our file reading, our file writes working. And it's not that hard to do. So what would you do then if, uh, if manufacturer wasn't stored in an array list of manufacturers? Like we've got our manufacturers here hard-coded. So what would you do if that wasn't the case? So what would you, what would you do is down here when you're saving data to file, you would save all the vehicle data to the vehicles file. You would save the index of the manufacturer to the vehicles file as well, but you'd also save all the manufacturers to another file as well. So you'd have a, a all, you'd have all of this code here for uh, writing for vehicles file, and then you'd have another another similar sort of code for writing all the manufacturers out. Okay, and you'd write the vehicles out to say vehicles.txt or vehicles.dat, and you write the manufacturers out to manufacturers.dat. So for the manufacturers, you'd loop through manufacturers array list here and it would be manufacturers dot get k dot get name manufacturers dot get k dot get address manufacturers dot get k dot get uh, build capacity okay and write in write those three bits of data out to file okay and same when you're reading it back in so you'd have two read methods or two sets of code to reading files um, so you'd have the one that read the the, the, the vehicles data maybe from vehicles dot text or vehicle dot dat so you'd read in the, the make model and fuel economy for the vehicle. You'd read in the manufacturer's index for the vehicle. And uh, and you'd match that up to a, a vehicle in the manufacturer's array list. Okay. So when you write the data out, it doesn't matter which order you write it. You could write the manufacturer's or the vehicles. It doesn't matter. But when you read it back in again, you'd have to read the manufacturer's first. So the array list is all set up so that you can do this sort of thing. Okay, so that you could say um, uh, manufacturers dot get menu index or whatever for each vehicle. So read the, read the manufacturers in first because the vehicle data depends on the manufacturers. So you can't read vehicles in until you get this manufacturers array list set up, and then you can read in the manuf the vehicles. Okay, so the code wouldn't change a lot. It's just you'd, you'd have virtually two sets of it, and, unless you look at ways of streamlining it, so you can pass in a file name pass in a file name here, pass in an array list here, or something like that, then you can shorten it down. But for, for now, what we're doing at this moment, you'd have two sets of code. You'd have uh, file write vehicles, file write manufacturers, file read vehicles, file read manufacturers. And you just have to write, make sure you, read, you, you ran the file read manufacturers first, like, like I keep saying. So that the manufacturers array list is set up before you start reading in vehicles. Otherwise, this code here will cause you problems because you won't be able to look up the vehicle in the array list because it hasn't been created yet. Okay, so it's not hard to do. It's just a little bit going beyond where we are at the moment. So that would be that would be an exercise for the watcher. So for any students watching the video, the video or any any people watching the video, uh, there'd be a good exercise there for you to do. And what I might do as well is add it to the to the future. Down here in the future, I might add in. Um, um, don't hard code manufacturers read them from file and save them to file as well so I might that in as a, add that in as a future thing 
Uh, if we get time and if we get time, uh, whatever, I might add extra videos if, uh, if uh, term ends and we don't get time or uh, we'll see how we go. So just going back to our table of contents here, well, we've got two things left to do. We've done the file write and the file read. We might as well knock, knock over search as well. And then we'll have a look at converting one or more of the array lists back to an array. Just, just to show you how easy it is to go from one to the other. It's, it's really quite easy. Okay, so let's start with a file search. So we want to have a search button. Back up here to our buttons on top of the GUI. Okay, there's all our buttons. I'll add another button. Copy and paste an existing one, it's always easier. Search. I'll call it search manufacturer. And I'll put that in here as well, search manufacturer. Okay, so that's our, that's our button name, search manufacturer. And down here, I'll add it to our buttons panel, and I'll probably add that uh, before the right. You can add it wherever you like, but I certainly want it before the exit button, manufacturers. Uh, one other thing I might do really quickly is just change the width. I notice that it's getting a bit skinny, so I might make it uh, 900 wide. 1,000, why not? <clears throat> 1,000 by 500, probably, probably better. Uh, so we've got, our manuf we've got our search button there getting added. And so we're going to activate that button. And we'll do that after our other buttons. Copy, paste. So manu search, manu search manufacturer button, add action listener, and I'll call it search manufacturer. I'll call a method called search manufacturer, which I'm going to create now. Search manufacturer. Okay, so that's, going to, that's the method that's going to be run when, we, when they click the button. Search manufacturer, add action listener, event, search manufacturer. So we're going to add this method, this new method now. So let's go right down to the end of our code. Private, void, search manufacturer. And so what we want to do, we want to prompt user for a manufacturer. We want to search through all vehicles. And display <coughs> those with the same manufacturer. And maybe display count as well. So four things there, we'll, we'll do those, okay. Menu, manufacturer. Menu. Fix a couple of typos. There we go. It's only comments, but uh, it's good to keep them typo free if you can. So, how do you want to prompt user for a manufacturer? Many ways you could do it. You could have a uh, a text field on a GUI somewhere to ask them to enter a manufacturer to search on. I don't have that at this stage, so I'm just going to use a, a plain old input dialog. Okay, so let's have a look at input dialogs, and everything returns a string when it's a input dialog in, ja in Java. You can't return numbers, everything comes back as a string. Uh, if you want to convert the input from an input dialog into a number, you've got to do a pass int or a pass double or one of those things. Okay, but we're happy with the string, so I'll call it name is equal to j, j option pane dot show input dialog. And we're going to pass in, remember you could pass in null as the first parameter for, for a, a, a dialog and it would center in the screen. Or you could pass in something else here and it would send her in your application. We want to pass that in, so it's vehicles, vehicle GUI dot this. And that means this dialog will center in our applications window, wherever it might be. So if we're five if we've got a five screen setup and we're running this on screen number four, the dot this dialog will appear in the center of screen number four, not in the center of screen zero, or in the center of the application on screen four, not in the center of screen zero, which can be really annoying when input dialogs appear on other monitors where you're not even looking. And we want to say enter manufacturer and that's probably all we want to do for now. Okay, so let's have a look at name. What comes back? We'll do a system.out.println system.out.println name 
Okay, so I'm going to run this code now and see what uh, the input dialog produces. When you hit OK, when you hit Cancel, when you hit OK and enter nothing, what does it produce? Okay, so Control 1, Control 2, and we'll go Search, and I'll go Cancel. And we'll see the word Null appears. Okay, so if I, if I search and hit the Cancel button, Null appears. Remember that. If I search and click OK, a, a print line statement appears because the cursor's down here, so it's printed out nothing, a blank string. And if I click search and enter something, it prints it out. Okay, so if I click the cancel button, null's returned. If I click the OK button, whatever you typed in is returned or nothing if you didn't type in anything. And if you click the OK button, you've entered something that's returned. Okay, so keep those in mind. We're going to now react to those inputs. So if name is not equal to null, in other words, they typed something or they hit the OK button, they didn't click the cancel button, user did not click cancel. <clears throat> this is where we want to do our processing. So uh, if the name they entered, name dot length is, is equal to zero, then they've entered a blank name. So what do you want to do? Do you want to search on blank names? You probably don't. You probably want to say <clears throat> error. <laughs> so J option pane, show message dialog, most that's the same. Show message dialog. And the first thing is a message that appears on a body, error. Uh, manufacturer is blank. Is blank. Or you cannot, you cannot search on a blank manufacturer or whatever you want to say. Then we get the title. We get the title string that appears in the title bar. Let's call that error. And the fourth parameter is the icon you want to appear. So we'll say uh, J option pane. And these are constants built into Java. J option pane error message. Close bracket, semicolon. Okay, so the four parameters, the, the window reference, the error message, the title bar string, and the icon you want to display. Okay, so the name.length is equal to zero, we'll display that error. Else, get rid of that bit of hidden apostrophe, sorry. There we go. And uh, so here's where we want to do our search. Okay, and display. So we'll search for all manufacturers and, uh, and display them. Okay, so we want to do our search. So what we want to do is go through all of the vehicles in the vehicles array list and compare them, compare the manufacturer for each one of those vehicles to what the user typed in. And if the names match, then we'll uh, display them as a result. Okay, so a little bit of code to write here. For int k is equal to zero, k is less than vehicles. So we're searching through all the vehicles. K plus plus, and we're going to say so we're going to get the manufacturer for that vehicle. Manufacturer M equals vehicles. I'm going to break it down in a few steps to make it a little bit easier to read. Dot get K dot get manufacturer. Okay, so we have the manufacturer for the vehicle, and if the name the user typed in uh, dot equals the, uh, the name of that manufacturer, so m.getName, and the get name is how you get the name of the manufacturer. If that equals true, then we've got a match. Okay, and this is case sensitive, so you want to, if you want to be case insensitive, we'll make it ignore case, ignore case. Okay, so if equals ignore case manufacturer's name is true, then we've got a match. So what do, you want, what do you want to happen when we have a match? Well, we want to display the vehicle to the array list. So we've already written this sort of code up here. Let's go back up to our display method. And it's very similar to our code up here in our display method, which is 
way up higher, apparently. Display, display, no, it's got to be down lower. Oh, there it is, right. Okay, so it's fairly similar code to this code here. In fact, what I might do is take a copy of that, Control C, because it's very similar code we need here. Except the, the difference is that in here we're searching for some, for a match on a vehicle. Okay, so I'll copy this code for now. So we're going to have some duplication for a second, and we're going to come back and revisit this and make it so we're saving code and getting rid of the duplication. So let's just copy and paste those display method lines in here. I'll bookmark them for now, Control F2. And I'll go right down the end and I'll paste these in here. And we'll fix the tab up. And the only difference is that uh, we put that if, that if test there in here. So for each vehicle, if the names match, we'll append the vehicle to the text area. And we can delete this old code now. Chop. So we're, we're doing our search, we're erasing the text area, we're appending the headings, and then we're adding the vehicles that match to the text area. Okay, and that should be it. That should be all we need to do. So we've got search manufacturer, we're prompting for a name in an input dialog. If the name's equal to null, I use a click cancel so we can display, uh, sorry, if the name's not equal to null, we're going to proceed. If the, if the user clicks cancel, we're not going to display anything, the user cancelled. Okay, so if the, if the user did not click cancel, if what they entered is, has got a length of zero, they didn't enter anything, so we can display an error. Otherwise, we can reset the text area to spaces or nothing, append the headings, and for each vehicle we find it's a match. If the name matches what the user typed in, then we can add that vehicle to the text area. So let's run that and see how we go. Control 1, Control 2, and we'll click our load from file and display. So there's all our vehicles there. Let's click our search and we'll enter Ford and click OK. And there's all our Ford, all our vehicles that are manufactured by Ford. Then we'll go Ford, search again, and we'll go Holden. And there's all our Holden manufacturers. And we'll go search and we'll enter, um, we'll enter uppercase Ford. And it should still match with lowercase Ford or title case Ford. Yep, that's all matching beautifully. Let's do a search on Mazda. And there's no masters in there, I haven't done any masters yet. And there's none. So let's let's now improve this slightly. We'll display the number of matches that were found. Okay? And if there's no matches, we'll display zero matches found. Okay, so we can tell the user how many matches were found. And we'll click uh, are you sure you want to exit? Yes, we'll exit there. We've just loaded data from file. So what we're gonna do is add in a counter, and anyway here's fine. Int count is equal to zero. Count zero. Every time we find a match, we'll add one onto the count. Count plus plus. And at the end of this loop here, we'll display the number of counts found. So, um, text area will display count plus vehicles. The Hickles. I'll spell it right one day. Vehicles. Vehicles found. Okay, so whatever the count is after that loop, uh, we'll display the number of vehicles found. Get rid of some empty space. Whoops. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now we should get the number of vehicles out as well. Let's go control one. And let's leave a blank line as well before we do that. So slash n plus. So we're just leaving a blank line between the vehicle's data and the count data. Control one, control two. Um, load from file, display. We'll do a search and we'll go a search on Ford. And there's 10 vehicles found. And we'll do a search on Mazda. And it should say zero vehicles found. It's working beautifully. Okay, so like I was saying earlier, we've now got this duplication of code. This code here is identical to the code in our display method. Apart from we've got the count being displayed, which I'm happy to display as well in the display method. I'm happy to display vehicles all the time, so that's okay. 
The only thing that's different is we're searching for a particular manufacturer name here. So maybe we can combine these two methods. Let's save ourselves some duplicate code and combine methods. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is copy, copy all this code up into our display method. Control X and I'll, I'll bookmark there. Control F2 so I know where to come back to. F2, there's our display code and I'll paste that in under here. Control F2 and I'll delete all that. And delete that. And I'll just fix up the tabs. That's looking pretty good. And now what we want to do is pass in a string that we're searching on. String name. Okay. So if the user, if the user passes in a string like that, a, a double quote, double quote string, and a, an empty string, we want to find all the vehicles. Otherwise, if they pass in something that's not double quote, double quote, we want to um, find just the vehicles with the manufacturer's matching. So you just want to change this if test slightly down here. And if name dot length is equal to zero. Okay. So we've got that sort of a statement now. Uh, so the name dot length, if, the, if it's a blank name, or the name equals one in the manufacturers for that vehicle, uh, then we want to display the vehicle. Okay, so if the name passed in is blank, we're going to always display the vehicle. And if the name passed in is Ford, say, we're going to say Ford equals the manufacturer for the vehicle, which is Ford or Holden or whatever, then we'll only display the matches. Okay, so we should be able to just, just call this method now with a search string, and, and we should be able to either see all the vehicles or, or just the ones that match a name passed in, a manufacturer with a name passed in. Okay, so let's go back down here to our our code. This is inside our search manufacturer code. And we should just be able to say display name. Okay, which is much easier, isn't it? It's much shorter code. Uh, this has now got curly brackets and that hasn't. That sort of annoys me, so I'm going to put the curlies in up there as well. It's always a good idea to do it anyway, I think. Okay, so everything's nice and neat, till everything lines up. Okay, um, so now whenever we call the display method, we've got to pass in a string. We can't pass in nothing. So if we do if we do this, that'll be an error error now. We've got to pass in a string. So let's go and find all the places where we have display brackets. Display brackets. And there's one. And we've got to pass in a string. And display there when we do the test data button. That's part of our test data. So we're going to display string. And that's it. So that should be fixed now. Everything should be fine. Let's do a control one, control two. And we'll do a load from file, a display and a search and we'll do um, so this, you can see the display the display work fine and it's now telling us the number of vehicles which is a nice bonus why not tell a user what there is okay let's do a search we'll do search on a Fords and there's 10 vehicles found we'll do a search on search on Holden and there's five vehicles found and if we display all this back to 15 vehicles, display means display all the vehicles. Search for Mazda, and no vehicles found. If we do a search and then a cancel, uh, nothing happens. There's no output on the screen, which is exactly what we want. Don't, don't bother the user any further. If we do a search and we enter a blank, we end up with the uh, error manufacturer is blank. Okay, uh, this hasn't changed, which might be okay, it might not. It's up to you to work out how you want it to work. Let's do a search and we'll enter a bunch of spaces. And it's got no vehicles found. Display, display all. Let's do a search in a bunch of spaces again. It's got no vehicles found. So maybe we want to treat a blank name the same as a blank with a bunch of spaces in it. Okay, so there's a little method in Java that's perfect for weeding out all the leading and trailing spaces. And that's called trim. So why not down here we say name is equal to name.trim. Okay? And that means remove leading and trailing spaces, tabs, and anything else where you can't see the characters. Okay, so remove all the white space, in other words. Okay. 
and that should help that better. So now to use the type in space, space, space to search on, we should be able to, oops, space, space, space to search on, we should be able to display an error on that. So load from file, display, it's 15 vehicles, search, bunch of spaces, error, manufacturer is blank. That's just what we wanted. Okay, so that's probably it for searching. Uh, one other thing we could do is let's say down here in our search method, so this is in our search for manufacturer method, let's say down here you wanted to um, display an error if no vehicles were found. Okay, so you only wanted to display an error if no vehicles found when you're doing a search. You don't want to do it when you're doing a display normally, just when you're doing a search. So what you want to do is get this method here to tell us when there's no vehicles found. Okay, and uh, what you can do, we'll go back to our earlier method. Oops, I've just deleted it. Display. There it is. I'll bookmark that again. Uh, so what you can do is you can make it so you can return whether true or false, depending on whether vehicles were found or not. Or we've got a counter here. Why don't we just return the value of counter? Okay, so we'll make it an integer method. We're now we're going to return an integer. And the last line of the method is return count. So we're going to we're making it available so that the, the calling the calling method or calling program can work out how many vehicles we found by returning count. Okay, so it's now an integer method, not a void method. Let's go back down to our this is our search method, and we'll get the number of vehicles found by int count found is equal to display name and then we can say if count found is equal to zero then we can display an error something like that there that's the sort of code we want we'll just copy that and paste it in here and fix up our tabs uh, error no no vehicles found for plus name plus put that on the next line make it easy to read on screen so I've got, um, so if the count if the count returned to zero then we can say no vehicles found for whatever the manufacturer was they entered for, for manufacturer just make it really clear manufacturer, whatever name they entered. I'm just running it in single quotes so they can see what they entered. Okay, so now now when a search is done and no vehicles are found, we'll see no cars found inside the text area, and we'll also get this nice little dialogue to reinforce that. That wasn't there. It's just something you might want to do. Okay, so I'm just showing you options here. Control 1, Control 2. Let's do a load, a display, a search on Ford and there's 10 vehicles found let's do a search on Mazda or Maz and there's no vehicles found here and we've also got the message coming up no vehicles found for manufacturer Maz so it's just making our program a little bit more user friendly telling the user what went wrong okay we could also display the name here if we wanted no, no a number of vehicles found or number of vehicles found for Maz or Ford or whatever we could display the name there that they're searching on it's all things you can do Okay, so that's it. We've done the read, the file read, the file write. We've talked about what happens if manufacturers are saved separately to a separate file. Uh, and we've done the search. Uh, the other thing, the only thing we'll do now to finish off is we'll convert one of the array lists to an array, just to show you how easy that is. What I might do before we go on is I'll just save the current code. In here, go back to where I was working, Camtasia, there's our Java code. I might delete all the classes because they're just compiled code. I might save everything so far to a file. Just look at the just look at the original version. Because some of people want the original version of that and this and whatever. So that's the 0.1 file read write search. And now we'll go on and add on the conversion to an array list. <clears throat> or to an array. 
So let's just pick one of these. I'll, I'll pick... I'll convert this to an array. To an array. So we're going we're gonna to create a, an array of vehicles. That's an array of vehicle called vehicles. Vehicles new vehicle. And I want to store up to 100 vehicles in there. Okay, just leave me a bit of space. Okay, so now instead of having, having an array list of vehicles, I've now got an array of vehicles. So everywhere vehicles is used, I'm going to have to change it to using array notation. It's using array list notation at the moment. I'm going to have to change it to using array notation. Okay, and I'll comment out the old code so you can see the old and the new. So let's do a search on vehicles. That's all we need to do. Find out where vehicles is used. Uh, that's okay, that's just the title. That's okay, that's just a group. That's okay, that's just a method. That's a method. Vehicles.add. Okay, so here's our first quandary. So we could say vehicles. So this is in the add method. I'm guessing, yep, so it's doing all the validation. So this is a good old, old add vehicle method. So the good thing about using array lists is you can just add data and it appends it to the bottom. With arrays, you need to know where you're currently up to. So are you at location zero in the array, location one, location two? What vehicles have you added so, so far? So you need to keep a count of what you've added so far and what, you, what your current index is that you can use. So we'll say vehicles something is equal to V. So that's our array notation, but we also need to keep track of the number of vehicles added so far. So number of vehicles so far is going to add one to it and use that as our index. Okay, so that's the old way to do it. I'll comment that out. Vehicles that add V. Now we've got to keep track of where we're adding the vehicle to in the array. Is it location zero, location one, location two? So we need this extra field called number of vehicles so far. That's an integer we have to create up the top. We have to create that. So vehicle number of vehicles so far is equal to V and number of vehicles so far plus plus add one to it. Ready for the next time we add a vehicle. Okay, so now let's create this and initialize it somewhere. Okay, so I want to create it up here with our vehicles array. Int number of vehicles so far is uh, equal to no, I won't do that. I'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, so number of vehicles so far. It's not initialized. So where do we initialize it? Let's have a look at our code. So we've got this clear inputs here. We've got this. Um, um, so probably what we could do is just go vehicles so far is equal to zero. So it's initialized in our constructor when we first load and build our GUI. Um, the other place we want to initialize that is when we clear the array list or set up test data. Um, and we'll come onto that shortly. So we don't want to do too much too quick. Let's just get back, get back where we were. Okay, so we've created an integer called number of vehicles so far. We've initialized it in our constructor to zero. In our add method, when we add a vehicle, we add that vehicle to that location, equals V, and then we increment that value to move on to the next location in the array. Okay, all good so far. So I might bookmark that code and come back there if I need it. So I'll, go, I'll keep searching on vehicles. Vehicles selected, don't need that. Okay, so here we're looping through vehicles through our display code, and I'll comment out that, and I'll copy that. Sorry, copy that. And now vehicles is an array, it's not size, it's length. Okay, and no round brackets. Length is a property of an array, so no round brackets there. And it's no longer vehicles.get. Okay, that was the old array list notation. Now it's manu vehicles square brackets k. Dot get manufacturer. So we're getting the manufacturer for that vehicle in the array. Um, sorry, now you've got to be careful here as well. If we do do the length, We've got 100 vehicles, but we're only maybe using 5 or 10 or 15 of those vehicle slots. So we don't actually want to use that one. We want to use the number of vehicles so far. OK, 
Okay, so we don't use the size of the array because that could be a hundred or a thousand or a million, but we might only be using a small fraction of that. So we don't want to loop through and display vehicles when there's nothing there, they're null. Um, so we want to use that number of vehicles so far to control our loop. And vehicles K get manufacturer, that's right. And down here it's not report area dot append vehicles dot get K. It's Good old square brackets K. So we're getting the vehicle at that location in the array and converting it to a string using our two string method, which is part of our vehicle class. Okay, F3, vehicles found us just the output to the screen. Okay, so we're in our test data now. So we want to say um, vehicles instead of that sort of, sort of code, that's the old array list sort of code. We want to use array sort, sort of code and it's vehicles 0 equals v1 and it's 1 and it's 2 so we're just adding the vehicles to each slot in the array and we're going to set the number of vehicles so far equals 3 we've got 3 vehicles in our array so far okay so as you can see, working with arrays is a little bit harder because you've got to keep track of what part of the array you've used up to so far and where you can add data and what, how much data you've got in the array. We should also be checking before we do these ads that we've got space in our array. Now I've got an array of 100 vehicles there, so now I can add these, but we should be checking that uh, if vehicles so far is greater than or equal to vehicles dot length then so we should we should be doing this check here in the test data thing and also uh, in our uh, in our add method when we're adding vehicles and uh, everywhere we, everywhere we add data to the array we've now got to also check that we're not we're not blowing our array size so if the number of vehicles so far is greater than or equal to our vehicles at length the number of pigeonholes we've got then we're going to display errors and stop and maybe exit and all sorts of things. So uh, we've got to, we should be going through and adding this code to everywhere we add data to the array. Okay, I'm not going to do it for this example, but that's the sort of thing you need to do. So when you change over to arrays, you're responsible for not only uh, keeping track of what you've used up to so far, but you're also going to be careful of exceeding your array size. With array lists, you don't have any of these issues. It's so much easier to use. That's why array lists are always the way to go. Okay, let's proceed. Vehicles, vehicles, that's okay. Let's just test data, comment it out. Again, another one to change is this. We're in the file right now, and it's going to be vehicles.length. And that's a property. Oh, it's not, it's not, sorry, it's vehicles so far, number of vehicles so far. So far. And down here, it's not going to be those. It's going to be... going to be vehicle square brackets k square brackets k square brackets k Phew. okay so everywhere basically you're going to change everything that uses the array list over to using array notation here whoops it's vehicles square brackets k no change that's no change let's just make sure we're searching on vehicles f3 and it's vehicles uh, instead of that it's not that it's num vehicles so far num vehicles so far so this is our message we write when we write data to a file so it's number of vehicles so far that chat there that's that integer we set up at the top there vehicles.clear okay that's not how you initialize an array that's an array list so it's vehicles so we're creating a new array so we're emptying it discarding all the old data and recreating the array from scratch 
What's the got a set number of vehicles so far? So far is equal to zero, is equal to zero. Okay, you're responsible for maintaining that. That's why railers are so much nicer. Okay, and let's keep searching. And it's not vehicles dot add, it's vehicles square brackets. K, I think it's K for the loop. Oh, that's not it's an vehicle so far. Vehicles so far, that which is set to zero at the top, is equal to equals V. And we're going to increment that number of equals so far plus plus. So no longer adding to an array list, it's now adding to an array. <laughs> so you're responsible for putting the data in the right location in the array and incrementing where you're up to in the array so far with storage slots used. Okay, almost there. That's okay, that's just a search, that's just a message, and we're done. Okay, so quite a bit of changing to do. The main one was whenever you reference the array, you've got to make sure you're using array notation, so it's a array name square brackets. Uh, you're, you're responsible for keeping track of what data you've used in the array and uh, and uh, where you're up to. So the number of vehicles so far, I've set to zero at the start. So the vehicle one goes into slot zero, vehicle two goes into slot one and so on. Like I said earlier, we should also be checking that we're not blowing our array size. So we should be checking if number of vehicles so far is greater than or equal to vehicles.length. And if we are, L-E-N-G-H-T. <coughs> and if we are, maybe throw one of these exceptions so we're displaying an error and, uh, and uh, exiting. Okay, so we should also be adding that sort of code in everywhere we can add data to the array or change the array. Uh, so quite a bit of work. So that's why array lists are so good. They are so easy to use. Um, and uh, you don't have to worry about keeping track of where you are in the array. It's just add, 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 and get, 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 and away you go. So as an exercise for the viewer, uh, why don't you go through and you can convert this array notation back to a array list notation and convert the array back to array list. All the code's there, but try not to look at it. Okay. So comment out this code and write and write the new, the, the array the array list version of the code underneath. That's the answer there, but try not to look at it. Okay. Uh, before we go, let's just test out our code. To make sure it works, control one, one error, new vehicles 100, or new vehicle 100, sorry, vehicle class, yep, that's right, control two, let's load from file, display, and you see everything's still working the same, nothing's changed, search, we'll search on Ford, 10 vehicles found, everything's still working beautifully, we've changed all of our array list code over to arrays, maz, none found, test data, save the file. So we've overwritten our file now with the three test data records. Let's add some more test data. Display. Oh, yes, yeah, so the other the other side effect with using arrays is that we when we, had, when we click the test data button, uh, we're, we're starting at that location again. So maybe we should be starting at number of vehicles used so far and going plus plus, that, that might be better. Number of vehicles used so far, and plus plus, and number of vehicles used so far, and plus plus, that's a much better code. Okay, so we can, in fact, if you, if you remember how these post, post incrementing things work, you can do it all in one step if you wanted to. No, I don't, want to, I don't want to confuse things. Okay, so let's go back and test our vehicles, our test data button now, and we should find that we're adding three, six, nine, 12 vehicles as we click, every time we click it. We're not starting at zero automatically again. Test data, test data. Six vehicles, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. Save to file. Let's have a look at our file. And there's all our vehicles. The 21 vehicles or so. Okay, so that's pretty well it. So we've looked at a bunch of stuff today. We've looked at the, uh, we looked at file writing, writing data out to file. We looked at file reading. Uh, we talked about the issue or the, or the, the added feature if manufacturers are stored to a separate file. <coughs> We've done the search for manufacturer and listed all vehicles with that manufacturer. 
And we've also done the conversion to an array from an array list to an array. <laughs> and we saw that, uh, sorry, I'm just fighting off the flu. Uh, we saw that um, arrays tend to be a lot more maintenance. You've got to worry about where you, where you are in the array, whether you've expand, exceeded your array size, all that sort of stuff. It's just so much easier to use array lists. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, any comments, please let me know or leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks. Thanks for watching.